Okay. Uh, okay, here's me. Um, I'm Liz Rush, and I'm the technology director at Seattle Against Slavery. Um, and I'm going to tell you today about the technology we build to make the world a better place for women in particular, but all people. So we build software that is around combating online sex trafficking with texting automation, web scraping, and chatbots. So this is our platform. We call it Freedom Signal. It's a suite of six different sets of technologies. And the two first ones here, um, we have decoy chatbot messaging and victim outreach, which is automated. These two parts of our project are um, something we call inter intercept, excuse me, and this is actually built entirely by an all-volunteer engineering team. So it started out as a hackathon project, and now it is a full-fledged software product that we're bringing to market, and we have paying customers, so that's really exciting. Um, the backbone of our technology is web scraping. As sex trafficking is moving online and off of the streets, we have to find out what's happening online. So this is an example website where we know that victims have been posted in the past because we partner with survivor organizations. And right now we have a list of 50 websites that we'd like to target for web scraping. We're scraping five of those 50. And we have found over 2,000 uh, geographical regions, scraped over 5.9 million ads, in the Seattle area alone, we scraped and found six and a half thousand potential victims. So we scrape the ads. What we do with that information is we take all the phone numbers out of each ad, we parse out you know, the text of the ad, what it says, then we look at the images, and then we find the phone numbers that are in the ads, and we dump that into our uh, software as a service platform called Project Intercept. And this is, the, this is an example with dummy data, but this is the backbone of our victim outreach. Survivor advocates get on our platform, and then they're able to send out a mass text to 100, 200, 300 people at a time. They say something like, hey, my name is Liz. I work for this organization. I used to be in the life. Do you ever want to talk? And then they start building these relationships. We know this works because one of our partner organizations used to do street outreach They'd talk to hundreds of people every year. They'd get two to three people into services by one year. Now that they're doing texting outreach, they have 40 to 50 people coming into services. So we know that it's exponentially much more effective, and that's what we're trying to do. So this is kind of addressing the supply side of online sex trafficking. We also have a survivor-informed chatbot that addresses the demand side. And I apologize. I know this text is small, but I hope you can kind of get a glance at it. We are the bot over in the light gray. The buyer is over in the dark blue. You can see they're exchanging some basic details like what services do you want, how much, what's your name, do you have pictures, that sort of thing. This is all designed, the language is all designed by survivors of sex trafficking and prostitution. So it knows what the terminologies are, it knows what the slang is, it knows how these conversations work. If you have never seen a conversation like this, and I hope you have not, feel free to give it a try. You can text one of our chat bots, um, and let me say it's a staging bot so you won't be marked as a potential sex buyer of a trafficking victim. <laughs> but please give it a try. It works best if you kind of pretend that's what you're trying to do, but you can mess with it. It's totally fine. Um, so I'll give you a second to look at that, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the bots. They serve two purposes. One purpose of the bot is to gather data, and in that case, we set it to ghost buyers. So it just has a conversation, it gets to the point where they agree to buy sex, and then it ghosts them. The other bot sends out deterrence messaging. And what that means is they go through the same conversation, and at the end, it sends out a message that says, hey, maybe you want to rethink your behavior because buying sex from a minor is a felony. So what we're trying to do <laughs> is change the culture around sex buying. You know, So it's, it's less about just... Uh, finding buyers but trying to change the culture because we know that law enforcement simply does not have the capacity to prosecute the huge numbers of people that are trying to buy sex online from trafficking victims and children. So here's the end of the conversation and here's kind of the chilling part. Our bot says, oh, it's just I'm 15, I hope that's chill with you. And our buyer says, oh, can you come to my place? I like your, ba I like your age, babe. And then it gets a little dark where he says, sweetie, what happened? Are you scared? Don't worry, I want you, babe. I'll give you $200, which is double the initial asking price. So this is a real conversation from the Seattle area. This stuff is happening in our community. 
So we're trying to build uh, things to address that. And as I mentioned, deterrence is part of that. So that bot just goes to the buyer. But if they sent out a message, what they would do is send out one of these links to a deterrence website, which we build. The deterrence websites list the facts about how prostitution and sex trafficking harms the victims. It sends out facts about um, the consequences of your behavior, so jail time, sex offender registry, fines, you know, that sort of stuff. And then it also tries to humanize buyers themselves because what we found and what the statistics prove nationwide is that most people who buy sex actually find it to be a shameful act and they don't wish to continue that cycle. So by humanizing them and sending them resources like Sex Addicts Anonymous, therapy, men's accountability groups, we're actually able to try to make this bigger shift in culture so that people aren't victimizing before anything happens. So this is just what I want to end on really quickly. This is what really makes this job worth it for me. Um, this is a quote from one of our survivor advocates. She says that she's on the hotline. She gets a call from a woman who was beaten and robbed, says she wants something different. The victim says, you have texted me on all of my numbers, and when this happened, I knew I could call you. So I hope that this has been interesting. I know it's a dark topic, but if you um, are interested in volunteer engineering, if you're interested in fighting online sex trafficking, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and I would be happy to take your questions. So uh, as an organization, um, our mission is to reduce human trafficking. We deal with labor trafficking and sex trafficking. Our technology programs right now only deal with sex trafficking. But as an organization, our mission is to reduce sex trafficking and human trafficking. The only effective means to do that is to reduce the demand for trafficked sex. So despite uh, you know, different competing ideals about choice and you know, freedom, personal liberties, and that sort of thing, what we know from models that have been implemented in other countries is that the only way to effectively reduce trafficking is by reducing demand. Yeah. I need volunteer designers and UX experts I need, this is my biggest need, and if you volunteer for me, I will think you are so dreamy. Please come write tests for us. We have no tests for our software. We really need engineers who can test. Um, it's not glamorous, but it will make the biggest impact on our organization. We also need folks who are just interested in spreading the word. We're a small organization. We're in startup mode. We went from two employees last year to five this year. I'm the only technology employee. So we're kind of at this growing period where we have so much customer demand and we can't keep up with it. So if you could spread the word, tell people about it. If you feel so inclined, we certainly would not be upset to take your money. That also is a huge help. Um, we are trying, our goal this year is to raise enough money to hire a full-time software engineer to, to start building, building out our team. Uh -huh. What does that first engineer do? Oh, boy. So, well, the first engineer is going to get to choose a lot of what they want to do. We, we found that people are called to work on this type of technology for two reasons. One, they really love technology. They like chatbots. They like kind of the scaling issues, the web crawlers, or they really care about victims. So it kind of depends on who we hire, what they're going to be tailored to. But we have so much, uh, we have such a big backlog of work on both sides of our platform that it's going to be something where the first hire is going to really be self-directed. <laughs> 